Hey everybody, this is Craig Cottle, the director of Nature Line School. My good friend David from Ultimate Survival Tips, you need to check out his channel if you haven't, which got like 400 million subscribers. He and I did a collaboration video where I showed how to tie a bowline knot. However, we didn't have time to go through some uses for it, so in this video, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you some uses for the bowline. So you need to go to that video and watch all the details on how to actually tie the bowline because I show three, but I'm going to review real quick, okay? The first and foremost is to do the classic rabbit comes out of his hole, goes around the tree, goes down through the hole, and you have your bowline. That's the classic way of doing it. And again, I'm going through these quickly. Watch the other video to get the details. The other one is a little variant where you take the working end of the rope, lay it on the rope, flip it so that there's coming up through the hole, take it around, back down through the hole. That again is the second way of tying the bowline. And the third and final one is what I call Mick Jagger's tongue. So I wanna take, make a figure eight with my rope. Once I make my figure eight and I have it, I wanna dress it up. Here's Mick Jagger's tongue. I pierce his tongue, grab his upper lips, pull that all around, and then I have basically a double bowling, which is a bowling on a bite. So in that regard, uh, again, those are real quick reviews on what I did in the video with David, so check that out. Now let's get to how we can use them. Now one of the uses, and what I see is the most useful use for it that I have come across is to set up a hammock. Uh, you can put the bowline on the end of your hammock uh, tie downs that are actually part of the hammock and it doesn't matter how much pressure you put on or how many times you use it, you're going to be able to untie this very easily. So what I do is I use a carabiner with the bowline in the hammock and then I can utilize it right into the hammock straps and again, it doesn't matter how much pressure I put on this, I'll be able to untie that whenever I want to. Another real good use for the bowling in a rescue situation is let's assume that you've fallen over a bank down in a hole uh, over a cliff line and somebody throws you a rope down and you're hanging on for dear life with something and you want to tie a bowling with one hand. In essence, what you can do is this. Take about six to eight inches off the working end, take it over top and bring that back to you. In essence, what you want to have is that rabbit hole that we talked about earlier then take it around the tree and back down through the hole. Now this is a bit awkward right here, one-handed, but in essence, when tension is pulled on it, what we have is a bowling. What I'm gonna do next is show you that up close so you can see what I did here with one hand. So here's our six to eight inches. We lay it onto our rope, bring it back to ourselves around the tree, grab it and pull it through. If you have two hands, you can do that, but what we're trying to do is simulate one hand there, and there is our bowline. It won't slip on me. They can pull, and it won't tight and constrict on me such that it chokes me or anything of that nature. Now, the other use that you'll hear most often is utilizing the bowline as a rescue knot, and the reason it's such a good knot for that is because once you put pressure on it, again, it pulls tight, but it's not a constrictor, meaning once uh, pressure is relieved, whatever you're pulling that pressure on is not gonna be harmed. So in essence, the bowline with the rope through it can be tossed down into something to somebody. They can wrap it around their body. Once they wrap it around their body, I can then ah, save them, and once I release, it's not gonna choke and or hurt them. All right now, I wanna be frank with you on this next one, which is what most people suggest that you use for climbing and rappelling and what have you. Um, in the circles that I run, it's got a lot out of vogue. In essence, you wanna have a bowling and that you tie a safety knot in. That way you kind of doubled up for safety, which is important. And this is what you clip into when you put your harness on, but I'm a, a certified high course uh, facilitator and it's gotten to the point where a lot of people don't utilize this at all. I just want to point that out because 
There was a famous climber who this came untied and then this came through the bowling and he died after falling off of a rock. So a lot of people have gotten into the habit of utilizing a figure eight, even though it's harder to untie once pressure is put on it, it's not impossible to untie. So just keep that in mind if we're using the bowling to tie in with. Hey, now another good use is, let's say you got your ATV or a truck or a vehicle or tractor, whatever it might be, and you want to pull some timber out of the woods or something of that nature. Uh, this would not be real useful to try to pull a vehicle out because the rope's not going to be strong enough. But if you take your bowling and just put it over your hitch, um, it's real easy for this to fall off. Uh, although you can put as much pressure on this and you can still untie this. I mean, I could actually pull another ATV out without any trouble uh, as far as getting the knot untied. But because I want to make sure it doesn't slip off, I just make a constrictor loop with my bowline and I can then put that around. I can pull tight and I can still get this untied real easy like without much trouble, no matter how much pressure I put on, it's still gonna come off rather easily. Hey, and if you notice, every time I talk about one of these knots, what I'm trying to do is tie it rather quickly so you can see that it's really easy to do. So there it is again. But this next use is not something I ever wanna to have to do again, but it's gonna come up. But when a cow gives birth to a calf, a lot of times they have trouble, particularly heifers having a calf for the first time. What you can do is create a bowling noose. And in essence, what you do is when you pull on the animal, it's gonna keep a certain amount of pressure, but as soon as I release, that pressure is released. So in essence, if that heifer is having difficulty giving birth to the calf, you can stick this up into the cow. I know that sounds kind of gross, but hey, this is what it was used for. Put this around the calf's neck. If the front legs are available, stick it around the front legs. Once I pull constriction on it and start to help the mother by pulling the calf out, as soon as I release, there's no pressure on the calf anymore. And so if you're pulling and tugging for an extended period of time, obviously you're gonna asphyxiate the calf inside the womb and you don't want that to happen. So a bowling works exceptionally well for that. So in general use, as far as a, a farm knot, it's a fantastic knot. Again, you can utilize this to rope a horse, a cow, a calf, a dog, a sheep, whatever, uh, and again, when the animal pulls, it pulls tension, but as soon as you release that tension, there's no more tightness on the animal itself. So it's a great knot for that. Quite frankly, uh, this is called the king of knots, and if you do research on it, which I tried to do uh, before this to see what other people are using it for, they'll say, man, there's hundreds of uses, and I think there is for climbing and rappelling and stuff of that nature. But as far as general woods and camping and survival, I just don't see this as being the king of knots in that area, although it does have its very specific uses. So with that said, this has been the bowling. You can utilize it for whatever you want to use, a noose or a knot such that it gets constriction when you pull, but releases when you're not having pressure on it because it is very good for that. As with all things with Nature Line School, come on, join in. Let's learn together.